I could use a few more cards in my hand. Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator, welcome back to Elder Scrolls Legends. I've got another deck, it's pretty interesting, doesn't always work out because it lacks a bit of offensive prowess, but if you can uh, get the right cards and basically stall until your moment arrives, you can net a pretty nice victory with it. I call it my Shackles deck, and uh, obviously it's based on shackling enemy creatures. Um, largely what you want to do is get your Dress Tormentor out there and every time an enemy comes shackled you'll deal three damage to it which can be really really powerful especially with cards like Winter's Grasp backing it up. Three damage to every creature on the board is going to devastate some stuff. So let's have a look at what we got here. We've got Lesser Ward which gives a creature ward obviously. It generally does pretty good, um, especially for keeping that Dress Tormentor safe, since that is what the entire deck is based around. Murkwater Goblin, uh, basically it's just a cheap cost card that I decided to throw in there because I had an extra space. Paralyzed, there you go, a nice free shackle, a nice three damage possibly, or just hold your opponent back for one turn, which can make all the difference. Arrow in the knee, obviously shackle and one damage, so you'll do a total of four damage. If the creature survives, they'll uh, be shackled, but very few things are able to, to just soak four damage up very easily. You've got Brutal Ashlander, uh, Last Gasp, deals three damage to an enemy, so a nice cheap cost card there. Same with Palace Prowler, uh, you want to absorb one Magicka per turn so you can get your Magicka up a little bit higher, play a card a little bit earlier, and it really, really ends up helping out. Valmora Spymaster, it's a nice card to have. Um, generally, I want to equip it with like a Mace of Encumbrance or something like that, so then he can attack the enemy and end up killing himself, and then possibly you could summon an amazing creature, depending on how much your max magicka is and how well your luck is going for you that day. Sometimes I'm at 12 magicka and I summon a 2 magicka creature, and I'm like, well, that was, that was a complete waste. But, um, yeah, sometimes it can really come in clutch, so uh, I really like these, especially because I like to roll the dice just a little bit. Crystal Tower Crafter, obviously a really nice one if you're playing a lot of um, action cards. There aren't so many action cards in this deck, I honestly would be open to replacing the Crystal Tower Crafter, but for now it fits in just fine. Embassy Guard, oh my god, these things are amazing. They do so well with stalling. They have a ward and then also four health for only a two cost card. That is fantastic. You're going to be able to, uh, especially in the early game, if you get one of these in your hand, you're going to be able to stall your way up to four or five mana. Extremely, extremely easy. Evermore Steward, <clears throat> kind of the same idea as the Embassy Guard. You're just stalling until you can get the correct cards into your hand. So he's got the guard and the ward. He's only a 1-1, one, one, but um, yeah, that one attack can really help early in the game with eliminating, eliminating some of the weaker creatures. Shrieking Harpy, she has that shackle upon summon, which is really, really nice when paired with the Dress Tormentor. So I try to save my Shrieking Harpies until I get a Dress Tormentor, and then you can drop all three on the same turn and uh, wipe the opponent's board clear. Wisdom of the Ancients is just a nice prophecy card to have. Give each creature a friendly... Uh, each friendly creature a random keyword, so you can get charge, lethal, ward, all that kind of good stuff. Um, breakthrough, regenerate, I think that's all the all the keywords that are available through this card. But uh, any of those keywords is relatively good, unless you get regenerate on like a one health creature. But a lot of creatures in this deck have more than one health, so I really like the Wisdom of the Ancients. Only running one right now, but uh, might get rid of Murkwater Goblin to run another one. <clears throat> Camlorn Sentinel, obviously just another good guard creature. Uh, two attack, four health. He's going to stay on the board for quite a little while, especially in the early game. And yeah, three cost card, no problem. As you can tell, my deck is relatively stacked with lower cost cards. Um, because I want to be able to play a bunch of guards and hold out. Uh... The power of the deck is not derived from the cards themselves, but rather 
what you do with the cards and getting that extra three damage with the shackles. So Candler Sentinel fits in well. Cunning Ally, summon uh, on summon. You put a Firebolt into your hand if the top card of your deck is Intelligence. There are a few um, Agility cards in this deck. Most of the cards in this deck are Intelligence, though. I just generally get kind of bad rolls with the Cunning Ally, but that's okay. It comes in nicely when you have a, a Crystal Tower Crafter out on the field. You want to, you know, get your Firebolt. Play your Crystal Tower Crafter, and then you can give it automatic plus one, plus one. And yeah, it does nice damage. That two two damage Fireball, in addition to a three damage Shackle, is going to uh, clean some stuff up for you. Dark Rebirth. This is also kind of played with Crystal Tower Crafter. I like to use Dark Rebirth on Cunning Ally after it's attacked. Brutal Ashlander. Balmora Spymaster is probably my favorite thing to use it on. But you can even use it on the Embassy Guard or the Shrieking Harpy. Embassy Guard, if it gets low on health and you need to kind of reset it. Shrieking Harpy, if you need that extra shackle. Dark Rebirth is a really, really good card to run in this in this deck. Um, Mace of Encumbrance has a plus two, plus one, and you get to shackle an enemy creature, which can really flip the lane for you. It's a super nice card, especially when paired with the next card, the Master Swordsmith. At the start of your turn, give each item in your deck plus one, plus one. Right now, I only have three Maces of Encumbrance in the deck as far as items go, but I do find at least one Mace of Encumbrance, and if Master Swordsmith has been out on the field for a while, especially protected by the uh, Evermore Steward and the Embassy Guard, that uh, Mace of Encumbrance is going to be extremely, extremely powerful. So I like to get Master Swordsmith early in the game, even if you can only get two or three turns with him, it can make all the difference. So I only run one at the moment. I should probably find space to run a few more. But um, yeah, one seems to work, you know? I just kind of get lucky and he pops up and I'm like, oh good. And if not, then we work around it. That's absolutely fine as well. Uh, we've got the Dress Renegade. He's a 4-4 guard for four cost. And he also makes other friendly creatures immune to shackle which is really, really nice. This is the one card that can counter this deck outright. Um, if your opponent has one on the field, then it's really hard to get rid of it, honestly. But um, as far as for me, it works out relatively well because you're not able to stop any of my creatures from attacking, at least not with uh, shackle cards, which I see relatively often, especially in agility decks. So I'm running three Dress Renegades. And three Dress Tormentors. This is a three, uh, four cost card, three attack, four defense. And yeah, when an enemy creature becomes shackled, deal three damage to it. This is the linchpin of the entire deck. This is the one card that made me decide, hey, I want to make a deck like this. It works out relatively well. Sometimes you don't get the draw of the Dress Tormentor and then your whole thing is kind of crippled, you know? But if you can stall out long enough to get a Dres Tormentor, then you can really mess some stuff up for the opponent, um, whatever they're trying to set up. Just shackle. Shackle everything <laughs> and uh, wipe it off the map. Uh, and something that can really easily do that is Winter's Grasp. I need to buy another one of these things because it is amazing. I'd like to run three in the deck as well. Shackle all enemy creatures. Every enemy creature on the board taking three damage is going to flip the game and then on top of that they can attack for the next turn um, so yeah they're crippled their health is low and they can attack that is just amazing so I like to save Winter's Grasp until I can play it with the Dress Tormentor but it can also be played in the pinch obviously and then we've got the Ice Wing Dragon 6 attack 4 uh, health this is kind of a, a frail card with only 4 health but it is one of the cards that I like to play later in the game. And, you know, whether the Dress Tormentor's there or not, it can get itself set up in the lane and do some nasty, nasty things. Obviously, with uh, six six damage coming your way, it's, it's not going to be a pretty sight. Um, and yeah, I run two of them in the deck. They pop up relatively often. Arcano! Arcano? Yeah. Breakthrough, uh, summon... Deals 5 damage, actions have breakthrough, and that includes the uh, shackle damage from the Dress Tormentor. So if you can get Arcano out on the field, 
then you're going to be uh, pushing through two extra damage whenever you shackle a creature that only has one health, if that makes sense. I hope it does. Um, so yeah, you want to get Arcano out there, then you do the Winter's Grasp, and your opponent could be taking a ton of um, a ton of extra damage if they're playing with relatively low-cost creatures. So I really like that combination. He's definitely earned a place in the deck. And then the final, uh, the final piece de resistance, I suppose, would be the Supreme Atronan Atromancer. Uh, summons a Flame Atronarch in each lane. When you summon another creature, deal two damage to your opponent. That is why, largely, there are a lot of low-cost cards in this deck. Because, you know, you get your Dres Tormentor out there, you get a handful of Shrieking Harpies, drop your Supreme Atromancer, the next turn, drop all of your Shrieking Harpies, basically whatever you have, uh, Brutal Ashlanders, Palace Prowlers, and yeah, the damage stacks up so very quickly. Um, Supreme Atromancer, I only run one. It is one of those cards that you have to be kind of lucky to get, but when I get it, it turns out relatively well. It's um, a focal point for my opponent. Obviously, they want to get it off the field because... Yeah, just one or two turns with that thing up is going to mean probably at least a third of your opponent's life, if not half, if not more, especially with the shackles and everything else going on, especially if uh, the shackles get breakthrough. So yeah, that's the ideal way that it is played. It doesn't always work out that way. Um, I do have a lot of close games with this deck. I'd say my win-loss ratio is about 50-50. But I, I enjoy playing the deck, which is, uh, I think, a really important part of the game. So let's jump into a match and see what can be done with this deck here. All right, Shackley deck, give, pick me a winner. I'm going to play in the arena because I need to get up to Mage. I've been neglecting Elder Scrolls Legends just a little bit. Obviously, I don't have uh, as many card packs as I should. I've been stacking a little bit of money, so that's okay. Oh, and we're fighting Imperial Guests. So, yeah. People who don't have login information obviously don't level up, and they have, like, just basic cards instead of all leveled up, so it's not really a fair fight. But, yeah, this, this deck is kind of gimpy anyways. It's just fun to play, honestly. So I'm going to get rid of all three of my starting cards in hopes of drawing the uh, Dress Tormentor. Unfortunately, I do not get it. I've got, um... My two Stolly cards, though, you know, the the Evermore Steward and the Embassy Guard, and hopefully that's going to be able to hold me out long enough in order to get a Dress Tormentor, but yeah, you never can tell. It's uh, a lot of luck when you're playing Elder Scrolls Legends, which I think is why some people don't like it, you know? Um, yeah, card games aren't for everybody, for sure. Even if you have the best built deck in the world, a few lucky draws from your opponent can send it all crumbling down around you. Which is unfortunate, but yeah, part of the game. That's for sure. This guy seems to be AFK or something like that. That's okay. I'll, I'll just sit here and plot my next move. Hopefully the Dress Tormentor is going to come out and then I'll just uh, get the Shrieking Harpy and be like, boom, whatever you play, it's dead. It's dead every single time. And I'd really like to get that Master Swordsmith out. Um, but yeah, I don't want to break any any gems on my ring quite yet. Yeah, I did get a Shrieking Harpy. That's pretty sweet. But I'm not going to, yeah, break any gems. Um, there's, there's no use in that, really. If he can break one of my runes, then I'll let him do it. I'll have a few more cards, more chances to get the Dress Tormentor. And that's when I'll really make my move. He's got an Evermore Steward as well. That is kind of poopy. <clears throat> I will play uh, my Evermore Steward against it, I suppose. Just so we can get rid of that Covenant Marauder. What are perhaps. Um, but yeah. I was thinking about popping a gem there and sending out Master Swordsmith. But first I want to secure the field lane. Um, because if I send Master Swordsmith out there, he's just going to get blopped in one my turn by, by these true. two creatures. And now he's got his Archer, which breaks my Evermore Steward's Ward. That's not nice. My Evermore Don't Steward's going down this turn. Me. Yeah. I should have just I should have just held back and let him break the rune. And then oh, I would have gotten um, 
an extra card and perhaps something good. But yeah, hindsight's 2020, I guess. I've got another of my embassy guards, so curious, curious. I suppose Camlorn Sentinel will do well. It can absorb all the damage from these uh, three creatures in this lane and kill them outright. He will die himself if they all four or they all three attack him, but it's worth a try. And he uses Crushing Blow. <laughs> so now probably the Archer is gonna attack me. That's what I do. Yep. So he's still got his guard creature out there. Dang. Is he gonna break a rune? No, he's not. Hmm. Clever girl. So my Dres Renegades out here. I'm gonna go ahead and play that. Because it can absorb the damage from both of these creatures and keep on kicking. You know? Take a lickin'. Keep on ticking. And I don't know if he has any shackle cards. Probably not. Um, it's not extremely common in strength decks, which he seems to be running pretty heavy strength. But he also has the Int, which obviously has quite a few shackle Dude. cards. Ah. Int and Intelligence. He attaches a longsword to that Evermore Steward, and it slams me, which is really not cool. Um, I should have missed that guy. Well, I'll play my Swordsmith now, along with the Evermore Steward, and hopefully we can get a little bit of uh, plus one, plus one on those items that are hiding in my deck. And yeah, if I could just keep him out there for a turn or two, that would be great. If I could keep him out for more, that's even better. Ooh, six mana drop. Whirling Duelist, damn. This is a five, five. And that is, uh, that is pretty ugly. Do not I got my Paralyze me. up, though, so that could be pretty helpful. I maybe shouldn't have broke my ward there, um, because if he has an item to equip, then the Whirling Duelist is going to take out my Evermore Steward and be able to attack my face. But again, he'll just break some runes, so extra cards are always nice. Oh, he has the fucking Archer, deals one damage. Damn. And you're gonna smash my swordsmith, aren't you? I, I should have seen it coming. Let's get a uh, steel dagger in his hand. Is he gonna equip the Whirling Duelist? No. He equips the Archer. Which uh, is an interesting choice, I guess. But yeah. It'll work well enough. Let's just hope for a good pull. There she is, Dress Tormentor. So I'm gonna drop that in the shadow lane, I think. And uh, we've got Shrieking Harpy as well as a Paralyzed Spell. So I could take down the I'm Whirling Duelist with the Paralyzed Spell. Yes. And then I could save the Shrieking Harpy. But um, I really don't want to take that 4 damage. I'll take the 2 damage, which is fine. But yeah, let's get rid of that uh, Archer we'll dude as well. To their and yeah, here you go. Enjoy an Embassy Guard. It's going to take that... That creature alone, three turns to get through the Embassy Guard, which is just insane. I'll be at almost max mana, at least enough to uh, summon my Flame Atromancer if if I do pull it, which you never know. Who knows? I've only got one in the deck. They're costly, man. <laughs> I don't want to spend all my soul gems on that. Damn, I got Fireballed. I did get to draw a card from that, but um, yeah, took down took down my harpy and broke the ward of my embassy guard and yeah dress tormentors now got 3-3 so that's a little bit worrying I'm sure it's gonna be fine though I ain't too worried he decides to take the swing with the uh, the bandit there which I guess makes sense because my embassy guard can't attack we back at all uh, he's trying to get his little brutal ashlander going in the shadow lane so he can destroy the Dress Tormentor, I think, we'll by sacrificing himself. So I stick my Embassy Guard over there to try and prevent that. And yeah, that will take him five turns. <laughs> five turns to get through if, if uh, day, he just leaves the Brutal Ashlander over there by himself. Dragon Star Rider. Yeah, this guy's definitely uh, going heavy strength. By dawn and it's a uh, very aggressive type of deck. Which is a good match for my more controlling, methodical type of deck. Which, yeah, doesn't really slam people in the face too hard. You just kind of hold back, wait for your moment kind of stuff. 
which, yeah, like I said, that's the type of deck that I enjoy playing, um, at least recently. So I've got my so Palace Prowler. Go ahead and get the drain there, and uh, plus one Magicka kind of goes to waste, but <laughs> that's fine. It's been a long night for me. Sorry if my commentary is a little lackluster. But yeah, I'll take the swing with the Dress Tormentor there. Oh, drop my Brood Lash Lander so I can sacrifice it on something. He's probably going to break down my Embassy Guard this turn. I have nothing left waiting in the wings, which is really kind of kind of hurdy. But he might also hit me and um, break a rune, which would be really helpful. I could use a few more cards in my hand. Oh, he gives the dress or the Nightblade a, a a a mace like I have. Oh wow! And that Sentinel Battle Mace that is that is crazy. Plus four, plus zero, and ward. So now that Dragon Star Rider is sitting on eight attack, four health behind it, and a ward, and he's got breakthrough. So this is uh not looking good all of a sudden. Unless I can draw Icy Grasp or something like that, we might be in just a little bit of trouble. Die. So he decides to sacrifice that Brutal Ash Lander trying to get rid of the Dress Tormentor. Ends up sacrificing my Brutal Ash Lander, which ends up taking out his fucking Nightblade. That was quite a chain of events that just Die. unfolded. Uh, I'm gonna take the swing at the face with the Dress Your Tormentor, drop my Brutal Ash Lander over here. Um, hopefully I can break that Dragon Star Rider shield, or ward, and then um, the three damage will go towards his face. His, either his face or the, uh, the Dragon Star Rider himself. Unfortunately my Dress Tormentor is now down. I still have two in the deck, but um, yeah, I need them. <laughs> I don't know where they are, and I need them. Still up by just a little bit, but yeah, this is getting ugly very, very fast. He's uh, equipped a little iron sword, so now that guy has seven attack, two health, and breakthrough. I'm gonna send out my Balmor Spy Master since it's all that I drew. Sacrifice my um, Ashlander there, trying to get rid of that 7 2 guy over there, but it didn't happen. Instead, I just broke a ward and. Uh, hit the dude in the face. I guess it's gonna have to do. <clears throat> this, this, yeah, this might not end well. I could use so, he equips here. Stolen Pants, which is new with all these Morrowind cards that are coming out, which I think is pretty cool. It summons, uh, what is that? Shy, Shy Dunmer or something like that? And then once that creature's killed, the 1-1 one, one Pants will go towards the Dunmer. So, Valmore Spymaster got Sly Marsh Blade, which is absolutely pathetic. It's a 3-2. Its only uh, special ability is after it dies, uh, if you have 7 or more Magicka, you can draw a card, which is like whoopee-doo. I do have 7 or more Magicka, but it's pretty pathetic. Luckily, I did get um, a couple of Prophecy cards there, so that kind of saved my bacon, I do think. I'll play Murkwater Goblin in this lane. Um... Yeah, I got the lethal keyword on my Harpy, so I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice that right away to get rid of that 9 attack dude. And then, um, yeah, I'm curious what to do here. I suppose I'll break my ward, and that's it. That that 9 damage is really going to hurt me, though. I don't know if he's going to try and take down the Sly Marsh Blade or not, because, yeah... <sighs> Giving me an extra card might be a bad idea at this point. Oh, shit. And he's got an 8-8 giant out on the field now. Like I said, um... I am a mostly this deck does warrior. lack a lot of offensive presence, you know. All of my decks need a little bit of work. Obviously, I'm not the, uh... The Elder Scrolls Legend Master that I should be. But I... I think I do relatively well from time to time. Oh, my God. All of my, all of my, all of my hate. I've got four health left. Uh, that imp can do three health per turn. Luckily, I've got two maces of encumbrance now. So we'll see what I can do against that. Even without my Dress Tormentor, we should be able to do at least a little something. 
Let's see if Cunning Ally is going to give me a firebolt or not. Nope. Like I said, never happens. <laughs> uh, make some encumbrance and then we can shackle the imp. Because, yeah, I don't want that thing damage to come my way. And then make some encumbrance and we can shackle... I think the giant is the obvious choice here. Because the Dunmer is not going to be able to break through a 10-8. So... Now the cards have kind of shifted into my favor with just those couple of maces of encumbrance in my hand. So that was really, really nice. Um, I'm still super scared of that giant. He can still KO my uh, my guard there, but we'll have to see how it goes. Oh, I got another paralyze. Okay, so let's paralyze the giant again. This is what I mean by a control deck, you know? I'm just taking my time, finding my moment. And, yeah, a little bit of luck with those maces of encumbrance, for sure. But, um, yeah, I was able to shackle his giant. His his Dunmer's not going to be able to get through on me, even with his battle elixir and all that stuff activated. So, depending what cards he has in his hand now, um, I might call this a victory. Yeah, he does one damage to my uh, guard there. It's not going to be enough, though. I, I guarantee you. Put a steel dagger in your hand. So yeah, the one creature that is able to attack, he can get up to like a 3-3, uh, three, three, which is not going to be enough to, to take me down. I'm going to kill him without breaking his last rune, which is really nice with those huge attack stats. So yeah, we were able to pull this one out of the fire uh, by some miracle. It, yeah. It was really just the Maces of Encumbrance, so we we got a little bit of Dress Tormentor in there. Um, would have liked to show just a little bit more because it really is a crazy combo if you can get it going in the right way. Here it didn't go the right way necessarily, but you know, it rarely does. So this is a more realistic view of things anyways. He sacrifices himself against me and um, yeah. Pass the turn over, old boy. And then, then yeah, daddy can give you a, a spanking. A spanking of spankings. <laughs> Anyways, friends. This has been Elder Scrolls Legends. The victory is yours. The victory is mine! Wonderfully done. This was a worthy contest. A worthy contest, indeed. This has been Elder Scrolls Legends. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. Thank you so much for watching, friends. Please don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the episode. We've got links to Twitter, Discord, Patreon in the description if you should enjoy any of those. I do appreciate it so very much. I will see you in the next one, friends. And until then, bye bye One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.